Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this lesson, we shall be discussing Africa by David Diop. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. David Diop is an African poet who is closely associated with the term negritude. Negritude was an ideology which aimed, among other things, to react against cultural deprivation and Western decadence that Africans are faced with today. This poem titled Africa as a Negritudian poem. Negritudian poems sought to revive true literature, the cultural values, and identity of the African continent, and to praise ancestral glories, and most importantly, project their hatred for slavery and colonization. Even though the poem praises the unbreakable and unshakable spirit of the African continent, having endured slavery, colonization, and bondage for a long time, or for many years, and still remains pretty much the same, he went on to personify his mother as the African continent so as to draw our attention and force readers to reason with him and say things from his point of view by feeling sorry for his mother or Africa or laments with him. Throughout the poem, our poetic speaker shows his disregard for slavery and colonization and how political freedom is the solution to the many problems faced by the African continent. Let's now take a detailed analysis of the lines contained in the poem. Africa, my Africa. The poet begins the poem on a sad note by repeating Africa twice to immediately invoke in the minds of readers the story state of the African continent. The lamentation of the poem begins with Africa, my Africa. The use of the personal pronoun, my, shows how dear the African continent is to our poetic speaker, and therefore, any harm on the African continent will be a harm to him too. Inasmuch as he starts the poem on a sad note, he, however, is proud of his roots and exhibits his pride in blackness through the use of the word my Africa. Africa of proud warriors in ancestral savannas, Africa of whom my grandmother sings on the bank of the distant river. As we said earlier, Negritudian poems praise ancestral glories and this line clearly depicts that. The poem bemoans the loss of forgotten past of Africa. The poet first praises the warriors of Africa who eventually lost their pride and dignity to their colonial masters as a result of slavery and colonization. Remember, these warriors were converted into slaves by their colonial masters wilting away their respect, power, dignity, and self-esteem. He also touched on an important aspect of the African culture by remarking, Africa, of whom my grandmother sings. It is worth noting that grandmothers play an important role in the transmission of culture from the older generation to the younger generation in the African continent through the telling of stories, riddles, and proverbs. Most people in the outside world know Africa for her rich stories, oral tradition, riddles, wise sayings, proverbs, and myths. However, our poetic speaker bemoans the loss of this aspect of the African tradition the rich African heritage in Africa is lost. This line takes us back 
to the pre-colonial history of Africa, when Africa was still Africa and not influenced by slavery or colonization. I have never known you, but your blood flows in my vein. Your beautiful black blood that irrigates the fields. The tone of the poet becomes more serious as he involves himself in the poem through the use of the first person pronoun I. Here, he tells readers that he has never really gotten a chance to experience Africa in this raw state as he grew up in France. However, his pride in blackness is more evident in these lines. This poem by all standard is a Negritudian poem, considering the poet's choice of words, his subject matter, and the images that he draws. He vehemently states without regret that your blood flows in my veins to exhibit his pride in blackness and the African culture as a whole. He equally used a praise word to praise the African continent, referring to it as your beautiful black blood. However, we are told that this beautiful black blood has been spilled to irrigate the fields. This line draws our mind back to the days of slavery where Africans were made slaves in their own country. Some were taken to other parts of the world to work on plantation farms. Therefore, they spilled their blood to irrigate the fields. The blood of your sweat, the sweat of your work, the work of your slavery. This lines clearly presents the people of Africa as hard working. The colonial masters capitalize on this hard work to colonize and enslave them. Africa, tell me Africa, is this your bag that is unbent? This bag that never breaks under the weight of humiliation? The bag is trembling with red scars and saying no to the whip under the midday sun. Here, we come across the brutality and unfair treatment given to Africans by the colonial masters. Here, David Diop marvels at how well the African continent has coped and endured all forms of brutality, slavery, oppression, and bondage. The woman is someone who refuses to give up to her abusers despite years of servitude, torture, pain, and bondage. He still prays the unbreakable and unshakable spirit of the African continent and how well the continent has endured humiliation, pain, torture, and servitude. But a grave voice answers me, Impetuous child, that tree, young and strong, that tree over there, splendidly alone amidst white and faded flowers. As we said earlier, Negritudian poems sought to revive through literature the cultural heritage and identity of the African continent, and this line clearly does that. He talks about the grave voice. This grave voice can be interpreted as the voice of wisdom or the voice of the persona's conscience or the persona's own conscience that answers the poet and reassures him that rejuvenation will help to renew and redefine Africa. Therefore, there is going to be a regeneration of the African continent. The unshakable spirit and unbreakable spirit of Africa will not die or fade away, but will rejuvenate in their children. The tree we come across 
refers to a metaphysical tree of life which will ensure the rejuvenation process. This is your Africa, springing up anew, springing up patiently, obstinately, whose fruit, bit by bit, acquires the bitter taste of liberty. This line clearly projects the rejuvenation that was discussed in the previous stanza. We see Africa rising slowly and growing stronger. The poet emphatically states that the African continent will grow to an extent that it will resist the torment, pain, torture and servitude imposed on it by the colonial masters. He however ends the poem by informing readers that the fruits of this tree, which are the children of the African continent, will attain liberty through numerous sacrifices. Therefore, political freedom and liberty is not going to be won on a silver platter. They have to wage a relentless war against servitude, against oppression, against slavery, and against colonization. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video.